Watch this. Nineteen students and two of their teachers murdered in a Texas classroom. Though it happened 1,600 miles away, it still affected some Idaho students and teachers who came together under one color to call for more than empty rhetoric. A small town cafe in Canyon County was on the verge of shutting its doors for good. That is until the community stepped up to help. Like this is what you got. Yeah, uh, this was the real uh, prize. Um, this <laughs> amazing uh, Sasquatch. What else do you give to the Gem State's best comedian? We're gonna meet the winner of the inaugural contest where the comics were almost as hairy as the jokes. There's been a question that's been bouncing around America for a while now. Outside of our homes, if you're fortunate enough to have one, where can we feel safe? If movie theaters, outdoor concerts, places of worship, grocery stores suddenly make you think twice, well, you'd hardly be blamed. Even more charged question parents have to wrestle with every single day. Where can we feel safe for our kids? Where can our kids feel safe? Sadly, schools went by the wayside years ago. You'll likely remember the big ones, Columbine, Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook, Parkland, and now Uvalde. It's May, and we've already seen more than 200 mass shootings in America this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. 27 of them have been at schools. The day after 19 elementary school students and two teachers were gunned down, Boise High School students went to school on their last day of the year. Last day of school usually comes with a lot of emotion attached to it and some reflection. But it brought a whole new set of emotions and a different type of reflection for a group of students and teachers. I remember Sandy Hook and I remember how scared my parents were at that time and now 10 years later we're still facing the same, the same issue and I think we've just all become kind of numb to it. Last night I was texting some of my friends and I was like well we should, we should do something you know it's, this is our last day of school and the day before that we have a mass shooting. So we decided to wear orange because hunters wear orange to tell other hunters that not pray, right? They, they sh don't don't shoot, um, and it seems like you know from September to May, it's just an open season in our schools. Then we were like, well, a lot of people are are, are grieving. We need to, you know, kind of have a place to stand in solidarity, but also to demand action and say, we want change. We want you to ban bump stocks. We want you to raise the age to buy a gun. We want background checks. There are solutions that have been proposed time and time again that Republican politicians just turned down. It's just so heartbreaking that we see this every, every day in, in this country and you know we're still seeing millions of dollars taken by our elected officials but from the gun lobby. What was the mood this morning with the, with the gathering? It was really sad. I mean there were so many emotions. It was really hard to express. We're very lucky to live in a community here in Boise High that students feel empowered to talk to their elected officials, talk to their teachers about this issue, talk to their peers. And I just, my heart goes out to students across the country who have to mourn this alone and have to think about this alone. Um, you know, and every day go to school and just have to ask themselves, am, am I going to die today? Are my friends going to die today? Do you really have those thoughts? Um, every day, every day. And every time we hear, oh, please excuse this interruption, you know, I think it's, it's the next word going to be lockdown. A lot of people are going to be talking about this at schools, teachers, students, parents are going to be talking about this today after what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. What's the message you want them to take? I want people to see that change is possible and that we as students, we're not going to stop until we get common sense gun violence prevention, until our peers stop dying in school. But my generation, we're empowered. I'm voting for the first time in November and so are a lot of my peers and we will not quit working until you know, our, our peers stop dying in school until we can go to school and feel safe and, and feel like, like we're not gonna get shot and we don't have to say goodbye to our parents and wonder if, if today's gonna be the day. Idaho's congressional delegation has remained mostly silent since yesterday when it guards, with regard to the mass shooting in Texas. Not even the hollow thoughts and prayers being offered up. However, Congressman Russ Fulcher apparently did appear on a local radio station to say gun control measures are missing the mark when it comes to mass shootings in America. 
Yeah, he said missing the mark. Strengthening the family unit, he said. The moral teaching that we have walked away from over time is needed to stop them, he said. We don't know if there was a follow-up question about Congressman Fulcher's divorce four years ago, but we did reach out to Congressman Fulcher ourselves, and we have not heard back. By the way, the gun lobby mentioned by Shiva there, the money mentioned by Shiva, according to a report by Open Secrets, a nonprofit that tracks money in politics, gun rights lobbying groups spent more, than, uh, more money than ever in 2021, nearly $16 million, the highest since 2013. And according to the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence, Idaho Senator Mike Crapo has received more than 55,000 in donations from the National Rifle Association over his time as a lawmaker. Senator Jim Risch, nearly 19,000, with 3,500 coming in the year 2020. Congressman Mike Simpson and Fulcher each took $1,000 from the NRA in 2020 as well. Both of them have voted no on House Resolution 8 twice. That bill was introduced in 2019 and would expand background checks and also require them on all firearm sales. The idea is to kind of close the loopholes that exist specifically within gun shows and online gun sales. And right now, background checks are not required by unlicensed and private sellers. The small community of Greenleaf in Canyon County is home to just about 1,000 people. One restaurant there serves them. This week, the owners of Nathan's Greenleaf Cafe, Cafe announced they'd be closing after six and a half years in business. They say they were given two options by the building's owner. You can either buy the building or leave. And the asking price, though, a bit over their budget. That is until the community heard about it, and they rallied to keep them open. Here's Katya Stepovic. In Greenleaf, Idaho, with a population just 862. You want some tea? Yeah, sure. It's not uncommon to find yourself here at Greenleaf Cafe, where today the food sizzles on the grill, refreshments are being topped off, and the tip jar is filling up. Thank you, guys. Since 2015, the cafe has brought in regulars and tourists alike, becoming a staple in the Greenleaf community. Take it from Dave Milburn, who has his very own booth with his name on it. How many restaurants do you go to and see your name up on the bulletin board? Happy birthday. Certain times of the day, you can find out a whole lot about your, your community. I spend the whole day um, hugging and kissing and, and talking to people. You don't feel like you're working. You feel they thank you for being here. Um, and really, it's us who should be thanking them. By the looks of today, many wouldn't know that just three days ago, the future of this popular joint was at stake. Our lease was up and um, we just didn't know how financially we could proceed. What I was worried about was not my family. My family's fine. But what I was worried about are all of these people. Where are they going to go? and where are they going to meet because this is the meeting place. Don't drop anything right now. Roger Daniels, who runs the cafe with his son and daughter-in-law, says they have leased the spot for over six years until they were told. We only had 30 days of notice and the loan had to close in 30 days. We were told on the 7th of May that we had 30 days to buy it and you can't get appraisals and arrange loans and do all of that in 30 days. I don't know that you would call it last minute. I mean, you signed a paper for three years, three different times and a lease agreement. So, I mean, we could have just went in there and said, um, you have 30 days to get out, but we wouldn't do that. According to Roger, the property owner made the decision to sell the property for $350,000 instead of leasing it out. But the owner, Karen Perry, says the intent to sell was something she had been discussing with Roger's son for years. In 2019, my husband was diagnosed with an aneurysm, and that was when we first approached him with the sale agreement, and he signed it. And we told him that we wanted, we wanted to be done. Since then, Karen says they agreed to renew a sale and lease agreement three years in a row, and then finally decided to sell for good this year. We were business owners and we decided to sell something. It's like somebody selling their house. Roger said he crunched the numbers and found that they would need $70,000 for a down payment. 70000 he says he didn't have. So they took to Facebook to tell the community their last day was going to be May 15th. 
The next morning, uh, Myrna Tuning and uh, Betty Lanham, who are two of the matriarchs, if you will, of the community, uh, came in and said, you, back room, meeting now. And we sat down and they said their phones had not quit ringing since the Facebook post hit on uh, us closing and leaving. And they said, one of your options today is not leaving and closing. In just two weeks, the cafe brought in over $70,000 worth of donations. That's a really good tip, way beyond a good tip. On May 23rd, the keys to the cafe became theirs forever. Everything in this building is everyone's. I mean, down to, um, we've had people help make booths. Um, we've had people help redo cushions. Uh, our customers bring in our decor. So this building is Greenleaf. And, um, they want it to still be here, and so we'll do everything we can do to make that happen. There's a positive attitude, perspective out there in the future, just knowing that you, we can come up here and, you know, you're welcome. Everyone certainly is welcome there, and they will continue taking donations for about another week and a half. They want to use some of the money towards renovations, painting, redoing the parking lot, and roof repair. So we'll see if they can get that money to keep coming in. Well, it's just a good example of how important some of these diners and cafes in these smaller towns, how important they are to the community and why they want to keep them going like they are. And not only is it a cafe, it's a meeting place for yeah. farmers, for everyone in that area to meet, you know, weekly, daily, whatever they have to do. And the big concern was where would all these people go? And learn about all the people in the community, yeah. like he said in the yeah. story. Thank you, Katya. That was interesting. More than a week after Election Day, election officials are still working election stuff, from hand counting audits to hand tossing coin flips. OK, we're, we're going to lighten the mood here a bit on the 208. But before we get to the jokes, we want to get to your messages. Well, I guess they can be both, right? You got any good ones, messages, or jokes? Let's see them. Here's our number, 208-321-5614. Join the 208 conversation anytime. And as always, include your name and the hashtag, the 208. But keep them clean, because we want to be able to share yours at the end of the show. We'll be selecting three counties from this group. Number 10. The first is number 10. 10 represents Bonneville County. One of those boring bingo games ever right there. Well, it was a first for the state of Idaho last night, as you just saw the Secretary of State's office using a manual bingo ball machine to randomly select eight counties in which to audit the results of the primary election. So why is this happening now? Well, it's thanks to Senate Bill 1274, which was signed into law earlier this year. It requires a post-election audit after every primary and general election. And this is how it works. 
Katia reported this yesterday. They put all of Idaho's 44 counties into three groups. The first, counties with more than 100,000 registered voters. Second, counties with between 20 to 100,000 registered voters. And then finally, those with less, fewer than 20,000 registered voters. Last night, as you just saw, they drew th from those eight counties, they drew those eight counties randomly. The lucky ones getting a visit from the Secretary of State's office. Well, we have that list. It's Ada, it's Bannock, it's Bonneville, it's Idaho, it's Jerome, Kootenai, Madison, and Payette counties. And within those counties, they're going to go to a handful of precincts. In fact, some of those ballots are being hand counted right now. And they're being counted by teams. Those teams are made up of one member of the Secretary of Sta uh, State staff and representatives from each of the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Today, those teams spent the day counting those ballots in Ada, Idaho, and Payette counties. Probably still counting. We're going to get the results of that audit tomorrow. That's the expectation. And the entire audit is expected to take about three days to complete. Well, we love these games of chance on the 208, right? Have bingo ball machine? Nah. How about another one? Coin toss to determine the winner of an election. Under Idaho code, it is the legitimate, the legal way to determine an outcome of election when, well, the votes are too close to count. In the case of a tie, that would be a tie between candidates at a primary election or general election. This candidate shall appear before the county clerk within two days after the canvas of these ballots. And they, then the winner shall be determined by a toss of a coin. It's exactly what happened this morning in Canyon County in the race for committeeman for Precinct 26. People who represent their political party on the local level. That's what that is. Candidates Garrett Peterson, Sandy Layton, both received 121 votes and they settled it with a coin. It's obviously a time-honored tradition since we've had it in code since 1970. It was a very interesting experience. I never thought we would settle a political contest with a coin toss. It's not all that rare either. It happens, well, a few times at least around the election cycle. Sandy called heads, but as you saw, landed on tails, giving Garrett the win. Thank you.
You know, if you could somehow sneak Idaho City, a Tinder date that involves Idaho's old state pen and an impression of Zim Zam Jim Zamzo into a tight 10 minute set in Garden City, well, you might be Idaho's best comedian. You just might. It's a title that was bestowed this past weekend after the first ever three day event that whittled 24 of Idaho's funniest stand up comics to just one. Idaho's best comedian Sasquatch trophy now belongs to 29 year old Dylan Hunter. How we doing? Dylan Hunter has taken his style of comedy to the stage since 2018. My dad used to tell me, if you can make one person laugh, you can make the world laugh. And my mom would always say, you know, what are you, a comedian? So, yes. Like Abraham Lincoln if he gave up. Or Tom Hanks if Big and Castaway were the same movie. It's a style that, like a lot of comics, leans inward. This outfit isn't helping either. Uh, or more accurately, toward his outward appearance. But now I just look like Rasputin, the used car salesman. So when did you step on stage the first time? Uh, the first time would have been doing improv in uh, college, uh, at the College of Idaho. Which makes Dylan kind of a homegrown product. A lot of people think kind of. I'm, I'm local, making these jokes, I want to uh, come clean. I actually grew up in the Caribbean, of all places. Yeah, it takes a lot of people by surprise because I look like I come from rehab. Uh, <laughs> like a trash can on Sesame Street. <laughs> I like doing very local comedy when I have these shows, because... Um... One time I went and did comedy in Idaho City. <laughs> the, the surprised laughter. Uh, this is a person who knows how those words don't go together. It just gives something special to folks that they wouldn't normally get from like an out-of-town comic or on Netflix or anything. This one woman kept shouting at me, You're Idaho City handsome! <laughs> Yeah, uh, that is a real story. Uh, I wish I came up with that tagline myself, but that is just something that somebody shouted at me, and I was like, thank you, I am taking that. <laughs> Idaho City Handsome. That's like being Walmart sexy. I, uh, <laughs> I didn't know how to react. This so, okay, great. you get up there two nights, mm -hmm. and you come out on top. Yes. How's that feel? Oh, re relief, uh, mostly just because things went right. It's a lot like being an oblong pancake, you know what I mean? <laughs> One of those comes off the griddle, you're not gonna throw it away, but you are gonna apologize to whoever you present it to. <laughs> My Tinder profile just said, I know and I'm sorry. <laughs> Having that set that I've been working on over the last couple years, like really come together in a way that I haven't seen it really do before, uh, it just felt magical. Now what? Now, oh, uh, I get a haircut. <laughs> you know, I like this look, but I want to challenge myself to literally shave off like five minutes of my of my material and uh, see what else I can come up with. Hi, this is Jim Zanzo here with the conclusion of the Three Little Pigs. Where do you see yourself? Where do I see myself? Uh, whew, boy, uh, hopefully not a burnt out curiosity that somebody's pointing at it at some brewery. Like that guy used to be the, the, the best in Idaho. As long as he keeps the Zamzos bit. But this piggy was smart and planted her home during the last fall of the Idaho spring when our soil's at its most nutrient rich. And she kept it that way year round using our three step patented lawn care program. Dylan should soon be making. Because since 1933, when it comes to protecting you and your family from mythological creatures, a name for himself. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. So, Dylan hopes winning this contest we're going to open a few doors for him. At the very least, he says, just being in it has given him a little boost. Beth Norton, the organizer of the contest, was able to get everybody involved. Headshots, got them video of their sets, an updated bio, something these comics can then send around to venues and festivals and hopefully get some gigs. Dylan says he hopes this win will propel him to begin touring the Northwest. Till then, you can catch Dylan this Friday at the Underground Comedy Show at Brother Brown's Underground Barbecue. Laugh or not, at least it will smell a lot better than most other basement comedy clubs.
A little programming note before we get to your comments during today's show. NBC Nightly News is going to be going for a full hour tonight, beginning at 530 from Uvalde, Texas. So there will be no six o'clock news, but we will be back here for the news at 10. All right, your comments for today. I'm so proud of the students in the Treasure Valley from the students at Boise High asking for changes that will stop school shootings to Nampa High students who are protesting banned books. They are standing up for rights in the state. As far as I'm concerned, says Diane in Nampa. There's no push button solution to the rampant gun violence, but I would start with mandatory background checks ownership licenses, limits on magazine capacities, mandatory gun safety training. These measures won't fix anything tomorrow, but maybe for future generations, says David, who's a gun owner in Boise County. I work at Boise High School. Our students are amazing. Shiva is right. We do think about school shootings regularly. Maybe if we all wore orange after mass shootings, legislators would pay attention. That's sent in from a teacher. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Just an observation, says our VJ in Wendell. But guns sure make it a whole lot easier to do that, doesn't it? We'll see you back here tomorrow.